Howdy woo! Welcome back to the show. It's your boy here, Agostino, your host, your supreme leader, your everything, your darling, your idol. How you doing? How you feeling? Great, amazing. If it's your first time checking out the show, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below, share it. Take a screenshot of the show, put it into an envelope, send it to a friend that you really love. And all that malarkey, innit? Please, if you don't mind, please, 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 please. Anyway, hope you are well wherever you may be. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. We have some news. Hot off the press, hot off the press. An event that would shock absolutely nobody if you're familiar with TFAT K and specifically Brendan and how he interacts with certain people on his show. You would have known already that Malik B has been told to kick the curb he's got told to kick rocks he either got told to kick rocks or if you believe what brendan said he's gone to seek new pastures new and you know uh, double down in his podcast and do his own live shows which doesn't really make much sense when you consider the profile that malik's at, at the moment and the free exposure he's getting at t5k it doesn't really make any sense that he'd leave voluntarily pretty you know i'm pretty certain i'm not the smartest guy in the world right i'm not the smartest i'm not einstein i'm no elon musk but i i would hazard a guess that he probably got kicked off the show and should we be surprised probably not probably not if you're familiar at all with the tfk law you will know that brendan always feels like um i don't know i'm, I'm not sure if it's uh, he ever feels emasculated or whatever it may be but he does get a little bit odd or weird around people who are generally you know quite charismatic and know how to sort of you know make a room laugh and you know can banter and laugh at themselves and maybe they have some and, and god forbid they have some sort of fighting background then he goes completely off the rails and if you're very very deep in the tfk law you would have known that i think malik b got introduced to those boys via brian callan r.i.p right and i think if i remember correctly brendan hated malik since then because malik the new the new shiny toy in town that brian was obsessed with and you know how brian's always talking about men's bodies and sports and you know all that sort of stuff and being able to get girls even though at that time he was married with two kids and now you know <laughs> It would make sense that Brendan hearing all those stories would have been a little bit like, what the hell? Like, who is this guy? And then when he met him, he kind of thought maybe he was a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a schmuck. Malik B would maybe say himself, he can maybe sometimes be a little bit, you know, a little bit too much of a kiss ass at the beginning. But hey, it's LA. It is what you do, you know? You got to make it in LA. You got to make it happen. And sometimes you have to sometimes, you know, lick a couple of asses and kiss kiss a couple of foreheads. It is what it is. The game is a game. We've now have a new development on the line here. And it looks like Malik is out of t k And if you're familiar, with what's been going on recently some people are alleging specifically the homeless cats that this might have been the reason why Malik B got kicked off the fire and the kid it's fake <laughs> dude <laughs> look at that yeah that's yeah with the yeah the ball yeah that's so this, and Ruiz, this, is a, this is a big fight this weekend uh, if you're in the boxing yeah it's pay-per-view yeah, no it's not it's on Fox it's on PBC no, Fox not, no, I don't think it's pay-per-view you sure no one's a boxing uh oh this is, I think it's on. You, I would buy that fight. I, talk I would buy it because I like it. My 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 girls makes this fucking shoes. Like, wait, do we have to pay for this? Yeah, bro. That that, that, that uh, scenes get down with boxing dogs. See, look, mm -hmm. yeah, I told oh, you. Really? Yeah, that's pay per view. Bro, I talked to PBC uh, yesterday. <laughs> look at face. <laughs> and Here we imagine go. last name was Here Areola. That's just look a the anger, new sign to the for the, the nipple. <laughs> He's gonna go full Aaron Hernandez in a minute. Malik, he's gonna destroy you. <laughs> I stand by my statement. Man. Oh, that stand, stand by, by your statement. That stand by your that. statement. That stand by your statement line might have been the final nail in the coffin. Now, upon watching that replay, is it me or do you guys think that Chappelle Lacey might have inadvertently got his best friend or, you know, his entertainment best friend kicked off a show that was giving him some, you know, unprecedented levels of exposure and allowing him to really, you know, uh, level up his comedy and be able to play in big crowds. Do you think he inadvertently got him kicked off by laughing that hard? I don't know. I know Chappelle's like the, you know, the resident sort of like uh, Brendan Schaub laugh track in there. But I think he didn't really help matters either, to be completely honest. And of course, Brendan had to come through and clean it up somewhat, you know, and give it the old PR spin. So, you know, no one was um, out there, you know, sharing some unsubstantiated claims or stories as to what went down. And I'm assuming probably a couple of NDAs or whatever got signed in the background because, you know, this is Schaub after all. And he, you know, probably has the most uh, fragile um, ego I've ever seen when it comes to stand-up comedy. Probably 
probably the thinnest skin of all time. You poke the bear too much, you might be, you know, at the end of a flipping chokehold. That's how sensitive he is, which is really odd when you consider his profession that he's chosen to be in, which he alleges that it was something that he dreamed of doing ever since he was a kid, which is obviously a lie. But, you know, he tried to clean up and make it sound somewhat reasonable. Here's what Brendan Shaw had to say. Do you believe him or not? You ready, Chin? <laughs> <laughs> Chin's ready. I'm ready. <laughs> the crew's here. Uh, if, you're, if you're tuning in, we're missing one of the three amigos. It's down to two. It's a two-man uh, wolf pack here. Malik, uh, Malik was fired because he lied about playing basketball at West LA. There's usually a bit of truth in jokes. So don't be surprised if, you know, Malik constantly pointing out, you know, whenever Brendan slips up on these, uh, what's that thing called? Pronunciation, right? For all the haters out there. Don't be surprised if that played a role. And also just don't be surprised if Brendan just went to be the only jock in the in the studio. That could be complete, make complete sense as well. I'm the only athlete here on the studio. Only me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's not here. I found out. Number I six. talked to the coach. Yeah, and they said, we've never had a number six named Malik B. No, uh, Malik's not here because yeah, Malik's uh, doing his own thing. Malik decided, you know, he wants to focus on his own shit. You know, his own podcast. He does his uh, show with our boy Justin, who he does called Cutting Weight. So he's going to do that. I think he'll do more episodes with that. He's going to start doing some of his own weekends. So listen, you guys know this. Being on the show is you know, a lot of demand, especially if I'm not on the road. It's it's three days a week, man. That's a lot to Besides Rogan, I don't know anybody else who's doing more than, you know, once or twice a week. So what does Rogan put out? Out? Rogan does five now. He, he does five, five three hour longs. These guys are insane, man. Imagine living in LA where it rots your brain to think that doing, doing five three hour shows is somehow equivalent to hard work. Like, you know, legitimate hard work. Toiling out there in the desert sun, working retail. Have you seen those flipping mugs everyone's been sharing? Those um, Starbucks orders they've been sharing everywhere on social has been going viral with people's insane request. And imagine you get one of those little ingredients wrong, you could get a complete write-up from a customer and you could essentially lose your job that's allowing you to pursue your dreams. One mistake on someone's order could result in you actually losing your ability to pursue your dreams. That's what hard work is. Working in those kind of places, nine to nine, zero hour contract. They can fire you on a spot with no severance. There is no such thing as holiday or bank holidays. That's actually hard work. Sitting down in front of a camera with producers and a whole complete, what's that thing called? Marketing sales team in cast media, handling all your ads and then talking into a camera and a microphone without any sort of thought and, you know, um, introspective ideas on what you're actually speaking about for a couple of hours a week isn't hard work and it's nothing to flip in pat yourself on the back with come on these la comedians are insane this ain't neuroscience mate you're sitting you know what don't get me wrong right most people that record and upload videos on flipping youtube are not necessarily you know going to be winning any flipping oscars anytime soon but this is the most low effort podcast that exists out there in the history of podcasts the most low effort. They walk in, chit chat about their day. Brendan, you know, pretends, pretends to have a personality by talking about American Idol and flipping serial killer documentaries. And then they go into what? What's the bit at the end? What's it called? Um, random events. I don't know. Where they got some section at the, at the end where Chin basically runs through loads of things that he's found on the internet that might be interesting. Most of which they don't really talk about and they kind of riff off other stuff. That's it. They do zero preparation for this show. And he's making it seem as if, I don't know, these guys are <laughs> sitting down and flipping solving world hunger on these shows. Excuse me? Excuse me? The demands on this show. Demands. The demands are laughing at your crappy jokes. The demands are sitting on these uncomfortable chairs, it looks like. The demands are what? Recapping another event that you went to in flipping Austin or whatever. Come on. So, who knows, man? Who knows? We don't know what exactly happened. Probably won't get to the end of it because I'm pretty sure Brendan Shaw makes people sign NDAs. But it has to be said. What's this? Now the third guest or third co-host that's left the show from Josh Wolf to Josh Wolf, sorry, Mike Cafferwood. Uh, Mike, is it Mike? Michael? Whatever his name is. Cafferwood, Wolf. Now you've got Mike Malik B. Yeah, he's just losing co-hosts again and again and again. 
What the hell is going on there? Who knows? What's the future? I predict probably you'll see a few more Brian Callen episodes here and there. It looks like the co-hosts are kind of dried up. Most of the LA comedians have either moved to Austin or have basically excommunicated the T-Fight K ever since the Brian Callen affair went down. So he's probably going to be a bit short on guests. But it is what it is, isn't it? You live by the COVID sword, you die by the COVID sword. This has been the Agostino Zynga Show. Thank you so much for tuning in as per usual. If it's your first time checking it out, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next one. Peace.